How's it going, boys? It's going. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be completely natural. <laughs> <laughs> So I heard the new track, that new Adelaide track. It's track pretty good. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. How long are you guys working on that one? Since October now, I think. True. How long have you had the demo for it on your computer? So, yeah. Since for I a think long I'd time. So I started on the demo in about <coughs> October. Towards the end of the, the end year. End of the November, year. December. Yeah. And then and just, then just the kind of, yeah, trying to get the next few songs out. And that one was the most finished, so we're just yeah. going with that one. Yeah. When you guys approach writing, like, how does it work? Do be, like each of you bring different ideas to the table, or is it more like a collective thing? Or is every song's different, maybe? That one was Dan, just um, Ben had already basically laid out the track okay. as an instrumental, and Dan wrote lyrics and melody to that, so that's how oh, Okay, that so but, you laid out like a whole track, basically. Yeah, you had yeah. the arrangement. It changed a bit, but yeah. 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 Different songs come together differently. Like yeah. the next couple we're working on, it was Ben, Dan, and I. Um, Dan's a singer. Ben's lead guitar. Right. Was, um, just writing together, like just having a writing session. Mm -hmm. We put basically the whole song as a demo together that day, the same day we wrote it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then it's just been like retracking and kind of polishing it up from there. Yeah. Cool. And so, so with this one, you had had ideas, and you just started in on a project by yourself, basically, and yeah. then kind of brought it to the band. I, just, I think we're all like that too, because Dan has his own stuff. Ben, other Ben has his own yeah projects, and we all kind of throw it in one Google Drive folder, and then we take ideas and right see what's going to fit, and then start working on them from there. Yeah, so and it's nice that you guys have like the production background as well, where it's not just like you guys are writing in a room and then have to take it to a studio and stuff like that all the time, because you yeah. can actually simultaneously be, you know, composing right. basically like using the computer and you, you, using Logic or you, obviously Definitely. I guess you use Logic for it. I think we're all Logic. Guys. Yeah, we're all yeah. Logic guys, right? Yeah. For the writing part, of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. And then for mixing, was it's, it also? It's, it's a mix. Oh, it depends on what my mood is. Yeah, um, that day. Okay. Or project. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm a strict it's, logic guy. Yeah, I'm strict Bothered logic. To really yeah. learn the ins and outs of anything else. I yeah. know. I need to get into Pro Tools <laughs> more, but like I just, I don't want to export stems. Like I just want to mix it. In yeah. Logic, but I mean, if we're doing, mm. like, obviously when we're talking about like film and stuff, like, I'll export stems and send it to the sound guy or whatever for right. a film. He'll yeah. mix in Pro Tools, but, but for my own releases, I definitely just kind of. Yeah, well, I think both have their pros and cons too. Because I think in Pro Tools you can only have up to eight, um, eight inserts on a track. Mm -hmm. So then you have to print that and then start a new track if you want to do any other plugins on it. Really? But in Logic you can just stack them, go for days. Yeah, there's no limit. So it's, yeah, no, I don't think so. I, really I mean, well, the limit of the CPU, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Logic's like way more friendly for like MIDI and stuff oh, like for that. Sure. I feel like too. Yeah, That's why cool. it's nice to write. Super in Logic, and then I usually deliver in Pro Tools, so okay. I send all the stems in Tools. And you have a session ready for yeah. them. That's so it's nice. just one session, send it off, yeah. and then they can do whatever they need to do. Yeah, Yeah. I usually like, I have to, like I'll group all the tracks in Logic depending on like what the stems are um, as far as, you know, instrument groups and stuff like that, and then I'll, yeah. I'll put like the time code in, in the file naming and stuff like that. And then organize it by queue, and then they yeah. can just drop it in. Because in Pro Tools, they can like it'll snap right to the grid if they if it's timestamped too. So yeah, but uh, yeah, I gotta get on the Pro Tools grind though, because I feel like it could be key. It's nice. You feel like you fit in with everyone else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a separate thing too. Like I feel like, and that's the thing. Like with with the film composing stuff, especially with us doing like smaller projects, we kind of have to like compose and mix our stuff yeah. as well right i mean obviously the sound guys have the final mix but right. it's it's generally like pre-mixed i don't have anybody else mixing it yeah. which i hope that <laughs> one day i do but <laughs> I, yeah, I don't like someday. mixing but uh but yeah i usually just grind it out in, in logic and then yeah but, but i think it, they're two different hats and i i think that like eventually to have a mix engineer doing it, it's like a totally different hat than than, exactly. the, than the production yeah. the composition side so yeah, different sides of the brain maybe yeah it's definitely nice to have a different perspective. Yeah. Give it to someone else and 100%. they might hear something differently. Yeah. 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 No, I feel like with, uh, yeah, with, with my stuff, it's like sometimes when I'm mixing, um, I'll, I'll still kind of like 
be thinking about composition elements so like i'll be changing stuff mm -hmm. um yeah. sometimes when i'm like Guilty. no like i need to have the mixing hat on only <laughs> but i can't do it like it's it's just like mm -hmm. all in one and then even when i'm composing i'm thinking mix wise as well right to an extent where you know like i'm leveling out different you know frequencies or eqing or even just layering and stuff like that to right. be f certain uh frequency ranges like upper and stuff like that yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like hard for me to separate the two but, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely hard. And then when there's a lyrical yeah, aspect a too, like well, you have a song, <laughs> yeah, and you're still like you're not 100 percent happy with the song, then the song, you know, we could be mixing mm -hmm. or not, maybe not mixing yet, but still working on production. Then yeah. oh, I don't like that line or trying to. Yeah. You need you need to kind of settle at one point. Yeah, you know, <laughs> on what on what you're gonna. No, stick for with, sure. But. With the with the new <laughs> Adelaide track, what kind of vibe were you guys going for as compared to your other stuff? Um, when approaching this new one, I think just straight pop, just straight pop. Just, yeah, just definitely a more retro like '80s vibe. It's got some. I could hear some of the 1975 synth, uh, vibes in there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, some of that kind of twangy, uh, yeah, yeah, picking guitar. The synth stuff was cool too. Yeah. Synth, ambient yeah. elements. It definitely synth. changed our sound a lot. We've expanded in members. Obviously, yeah. Ben joining right last summer. We went to high school together. Okay. And he was like the drummer. In right. High school. <laughs> he was the guy. The Where did you guys go? I was school a year again? younger. Corpus Christi. Okay. In Burlington. Okay. Yeah. He was uh, the drummer in high school, and then didn't see him for probably five years. Five, yeah. See each other for true. a while. Uh, and he was in another band. I don't, yeah, a couple different <laughs> bands. Towards the end of high school, and then coming out. Yeah. And then. I was just focusing on my own, own stuff, and then all of a sudden Adelaide came along and yeah. linked up. Yeah, Once yeah, it's a, it's a cool little reunion. That's cool. Yeah. How, and how long uh, since <coughs> you guys started the band originally? Band was uh, probably two years now. Okay, two and a half maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so it started with um, Dan and Ben wanting to start something. Yeah. Uh, I'd been in England studying, and I came back, and I'm like, sure, I'll join a band. That sounds, yeah. sounds wicked. What were you studying in, in England? Uh, I was just on an exchange, okay. like a semester. Right. Uh, like the third year with business, yeah. yeah. It was a good time. That's so fun. I came back, and yeah, I was like, I'll play, the, play in a band. That's yeah, sweet. That's <laughs> I, hadn't played, I hadn't played in one since high school, yeah. so I was uh, looking to get into that. And then we found Adam to play bass, and then I guess it was a year later... Um, I had to go away on vacation. I had to go away, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, go Ben away. was fill, filling in because I was playing drums in the band. Right, right. Ben was filling in, and then when I came back, I'm like, "How about we like expand? And, yeah, and put some keys in the band. Yeah, change our sound a bit, and yeah, that's how it happened. That's how it went down. Ben joined yeah. up full time. That's it, <laughs> and that was that. That no, was that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I I haven't done the band thing for a while either. Cause yeah. like in high school it was like straight classic rock blues or, or like yeah. even mm -hmm. playing in like the school bands and stuff, playing bass and like guitar. But like after high school, like that's when I kind of switched and started to get into the film music stuff. Or I started getting interested in it anyway, and like I I started like picking up the piano because I was just like straight guitar and bass basically mm -hmm. before messed around like with vocals and drums a little bit but it was basically just rock band instruments so it was kind of it, it was interesting how it happened because everyone from high school remembers me as like the you know rock and roll yeah. and stuff oh, like i had that. that i had that impression right? yeah and i was like yeah. you doing film stuff <laughs> what's going on here it's so random and <laughs> yeah. then like it kind of and then and then people that know me now have no idea that like yeah. it was like the led zeppelin rush yeah, like in you had the long, long hair, hair like, yeah. <laughs> so that was yeah it's definitely like it was such a change i don't even know what i think i i started playing in the concert band and we started to do some film stuff actually and we we had played mm -hmm. like like Hans, like um, Pirates of the Caribbean medleys and stuff like that, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool." Yeah. And so I started to like compose in like grade eleven and twelve using like like finale, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And we we're just like just writing stuff, and everything that I was writing was like kind of film score e, you know, like it wasn't because I didn't grow up with classical music at all or mm -hmm. like orchestra music, but I always liked soundtracks. Like even as a kid, I remember. I like finding old CDs of like parts of the Caribbean 2 soundtrack or like 
all these different ones that I must have asked for like before I was even like into rock or even playing instruments yeah. like back in grade six or something grade five like mm. so it kind of all came full circle inadvertently but what about for you guys how did it kind of go from I mean obviously you're still doing the band stuff but how mm. when did the film music the media stuff the production stuff start to become more of a, a thing that you're interested in thing what's the I was always interested in classical. I was classically trained okay. from you know the age of three or four, uh, straight up until a few years ago. And was that piano? Um, or, yeah. Right. Okay. And like the theory behind it, and yeah. even I was introduced to orchestras at a very young age. So I've always had this fixation about orchestral music, classical music, mm -hmm. one of my like, favorite genres, and I just love listening to that. So being brought up on that kind of influenced me in you know kind of pushing it towards the the film scoring right because you, you know it's you have that it, it's more of that new age music mm -hmm. i've always been a fan of um uh holst right so he's a kind of 21st century 20 this 20th mm -hmm. century composer so it's very modern in a way and yeah even, even holst stuff it, it kind of has that film music vibe it does so that kind of drew me into yeah I mean, there's you can lots see of temp tracks probably. Oh, yeah, holes, yeah. For, holes, right? <laughs> for Star oh, Wars, yeah. like I think they literally <laughs> used yeah. like the like the planets, the planets and stuff like yeah. that, right? Uh, so yeah, that definitely is a film music vibe that the, sure. the composer started to yeah. adopt. I feel like. It's definitely a big personal favorite. Yeah, I mean, like it's so ex self-explanatory. Like it, when you listen to like the planets and then listen to like John Williams stuff in Star Wars, especially, it's like, like oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Oh, <laughs> those must have been temp tracks, yeah. you know, yeah. like. Um, but it's interesting how that works, how they can, you know, the old stuff becomes integrated yeah. in the new medium. Um, I think that's cool. So that was some, so you were always interested in, in the orchestra stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's, I slightly write for things and kind of dabble around in composition. It wasn't my main yeah. uh, focus. It was kind of the performance aspect. And then all of a sudden it just kind of did a complete 180 and composition and arrangement orchestration became my main focus and mm -hmm. I kind of put it to film when I met um, a film student I was only in grade eight grade nine okay and I had a friend one of my neighbors he was so interested in film and he kind of drew me into that yeah mm -hmm. yeah that sounds film. very similar to me with uh, my friends as yeah. well so that's that's cool that, that. So I'd score his videos in yeah. high school and just have a, a ton of fun with yeah. it and it's a huge learning experience too so it, it was kind of nice having that experience fairly young and mm -hmm. then learning from that no, that's sick, man. Like I, for me, it was like I had I had a similar thing. Now you're, you're refreshing my memory. My buddy, uh, I have these two buddies, Glenn McGarry and Sean McGarry. They, they're twins. Glenn's in film. He just finished at Sheridan. Then Sean's in animations, and he does like a lot of the like the major link videos on like YouTube and stuff, the Zelda stuff. Yeah. Um, but they were always interested in film, and like actually specifically. Um, they grew up on like anime and stuff like that, like a lot of the the Eastern, like the Japanese um, uh, animations and, and those kind of series. Um, and they were always interested in, in the film aspect. So yeah, during high school, we had like English projects and stuff like that. And they'd be like, like Glenn would be just the best, you know, <laughs> filmmaker because no one no one knew how to work a camera in high school. Right. And he would just make these huge. things. You could make a video. It was so <laughs> cool. Yeah, like, he'd make stuff for the announcements <laughs> and like he'd make stuff for whatever, like the football team. And I remember, because again, I was I was just guitar back then. I remember this one video. It was like grade eleven English class, and we like kind of scored it. And I used like acoustic guitar with like reverb and all these like weird sounds and stuff. <laughs> and I was nice. using like a, like a light version of like Ableton or something at the time, like some mm -hmm. free version I got. And uh, so that was the start. Actually, that was the first time that we did something to picture. And then it was when he applied to. Uh, like Sheridan originally like after grade 12 then yeah. that was the second time I really actually scored something like I guess that was the first time I really scored it like properly or whatever I mean it was horrible but like, <laughs> <laughs> you know using garage band or whatever yeah. like we were but we didn't even know the process and we were like yeah. okay we'll film it and then I'll just make a track and then you put it on and then you can chop it up like we had no idea that like yeah. you scored a picture like so but that's kind of how how I got into that and then just running through his journey and then uh, you know people around him through the school that's kind of how I got into it just doing the student films really so 
What about you, man? How did you get into the production aspect? The production, <clears throat> I think it comes from a lot of different different angles. And it's yeah. kind of the sum of everything I've done musically. Right. It really fits well. Like I took the classical piano route as well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which I really appreciate, and I really, I really love a lot of classical music and stuff. So yeah, for sure. There's that side of it. <clears throat> and there's also growing up just messing around with Garage Band. Yeah, I'd spend hours, really yeah. hours and hours, just like <laughs> dragging loops in. <laughs> yeah, like basically that's what it was: was dragging yeah. loops and like drum beats and stuff. How old but, were you during when you were doing that <clears throat> the Garage Band um, stuff? Anyway, anywhere from probably third, fourth grade. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that's why logic is like so. It just like makes sense. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's just the continuation, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, that I guess you can call it production. It really wasn't production. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like messing around, but making music. No, right? that's on cool. Computer, that's a nice is, introduction to it. Though. Yeah. I, I, yeah, because that <clears throat> like that's yeah early grade yeah, two three. Yeah, pretty pretty young. I remember making stuff all the time uh and always loved like i, I love movies and i loved music yeah and, um my favorite movies happen to be like the ones with these amazing scores yeah you know pirates totally. and lord of the rings yeah. and star wars and <clears throat> so um yeah that that's an element as well the the um, film side mm -hmm. and then just being in bands in high school and um like school bands as well as rock bands and stuff yeah. and yeah. lots of different jazz elements band. coming together. Jazz yeah. band. Jazz <laughs> band with this guy. Oh, you guys are in it? Yeah. yeah. It's fun. It's fun. I wonder if we ever played at any um, events, like any competitions together. But I think no. probably Halton board is different than the Hamilton board. Cause Did we, you go to we, Halifax? Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. We'd yep. done like, there was a couple competitions at different, they're all like Catholic high schools, right? So yeah. it was really in that system too. But I think they're different boards, so probably yeah, we maybe, yeah. But so I don't remember we did many competitions <coughs> or anything. We okay. only did that one in Halifax. Yeah, sure. I don't think we were gonna. Uh, we used <laughs> 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 just garbage. Eh? <laughs> I think I think we did okay at that one, right? Yeah, yeah. we made a trip out of it, which is fun. It was a couple yeah. days in Halifax. We did a New York <laughs> one, and we were just we hardly played music. Like yeah. we had like one session with yeah. like a Broadway, like whatever, yeah. and like then we were just kind of messing around. So I was drinking in the room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Wait, yeah, how do you know? <laughs> literally. Yeah, that was funny. Oh man, but yeah, jazz band. I feel like it was the music in high school for me, like because the concert band, jazz band, that started getting me into composition. Right. In more of a traditional sense, like using you know sheet music, using finale. Cause I, cause I didn't have the classical background. Like I started, whatever grade seven, like playing guitar, rock, blues by ear. But it was in high school when I started to actually like, cause I played bass in in like class or whatever. So I started to actually read. Like I hadn't read mm -hmm. before there, read music, and then it kind of you know through the years that was how I think I got into the composition stuff. Mm. Um, but but yeah, that was I think that was that was the entrance of it. Did you write on a staff? Right on treble clef and bass clef. Yeah, I, I don't do that. <laughs> <No. laughs> See, that's the problem, it, and it is a problem actually because like you don't keep your chops up. Because when we're work, especially when yeah. we're working on like these short <laughs> films, indie films, like the Toronto stuff, like there's like the budget's so small. It, like yeah. we probably don't have a real instrument. It's all in the box. Maybe one guy, but even when I have my one violin buddy read, like. I don't write the sheet music for him. Like I'm just like, yeah, this is the part, and he just learns <laughs> it. Plays it. Yeah. He plays it. Like <laughs> he plays it along. Like I'll give him. I'll literally have the MIDI on the screen for him, and yeah. he's like, oh, this is good. Or or I'll do like Logic's really crappy sheet music. Right. <laughs> I just pull up the score. Yeah, it works because I'm like, I, I'm not get. You know what? It's, it'll take a while to transcribe it, and um, so that's one thing that I actually wish I did more of, and I need to do more of mm -hmm. because I feel like I. I you know if you don't use the skill like it kind of goes away right yeah and it was something that i had done um because i was going to go to music school and i was studying like doing like the rcm like the theory stuff and all of that yeah. um but i ended up taking the business route as well because uh, i wanted to do the film music stuff and none of the canadian schools have film music it's it's either classical or jazz mm -hmm. and i don't want you know going to berkeley and stuff in the states would be nice but it's very expensive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unless you get a scholarship so i was like you know what i'll do business and i'll just kind of like kind of do it part-time finish like economics and mm -hmm. whatever didn't didn't really like 
university that much, <laughs> but <laughs> I was able to play in the jazz band and take yeah. courses because I had the RCM credits, exactly. uh, credentials, so I was able to take music courses and like kind of minor in it. I don't think I officially got a minor, but like I took a lot of, of music courses, courses yeah. so it was nice. Um, but yeah, definitely miss the sheet music writing because like using Logic, it's just like, okay, how am I beefing it up? How am I? Yeah. But I think like a general, obviously, knowledge of the orchestra is key, but I think we're getting away from that too because we're just using the computer right. mm -hmm. and people are not thinking about the range of instruments or you just relying on the samples and like that kind of stuff yeah. but so that's one thing i'm really trying to do is just focus on kind of sitting down and imagining where everything's sitting so it's kind of like that's mixing key. it that's key with the arrangement yeah so if you know you got woodwinds right at the back of the room just mm -hmm. kind of pull them down a bit at a slight delay on the reverb and yeah so technical it'd be easier just to sit in a room with them but yeah you gotta have money for that well, no it's true man like i and i remember i don't know what video i was watching i think it was like um hans and like the guys talking about like the dark knight and how they had when they were doing the, that big brass sound how they had the mics out like the in the balcony of the oh, church yeah. right and like mm. so that it would really like uh and they'd actually have not only the mics up there but i think they actually had brass players on up in the in the balconies yeah. um or whatever and so they were like elevated over the orchestra it's just like those mm. little tricks like thinking about the spatial yeah. like what would they actually do if they're recording at air or if right. they're recording at a scoring stage mm -hmm. then trying to like apply it i mean obviously you can't do it exactly or even close to what it is but i try to do that too like i'll think about like different reverbs like church reverbs and then i'll think mm -hmm. about like oh church balcony reverb okay what does this do <laughs> this one's like a it feels higher it feels like you know the mics are up higher and the sample libraries now like you can especially with Han with Hans Zimmer strings like the Spitfire oh, one like you can everything. adjust all of the mics yeah like it's it's insane so it's it's nice to think like that because well, that's the true room too so you can experiment with yeah you know, I think it was what Air Studios they recorded yeah it was there so yeah, you can experience with the mics of the room and mm -hmm. instead of throwing on extra convolution reverb yeah, exactly. making it sound like yeah. it and that's the thing the only thing sometimes it's like with all there there's i guess we have to figure out since we're all in the box we have to figure out a way to you know make everything cohesive as if it's coming out of one room because we could use hans strings then that's recorded at air then we use some east west sample then we use whatever yeah. you know native instruments they're all coming from different rooms then to kind of put it through a uh, even like a tad of some of like a convolution reverb that's the same to make it all fit ish you yeah, know yeah. Together, but, yeah. but that's hard it's still not the same it's still not the same <laughs> especially when like some some samples like they're obviously all of these libraries are you know they're recorded in different settings and there's different you know amounts of like noise in, in certain things yeah. and you can hear different things like i even find sometimes with certain ones in the hans strings more of the effects like um Th there's sometimes like more air and more white noise it kind of feels like and so when you you play it it comes in and then it fades out after and you're like okay now i have to mask that with something because yeah. now my other library is playing and i need to put some kind of air or noise like that hall noise you showed me in east west yeah. it's key actually well, like i've been using it's, it all the time it's like a nice glue yeah it's, it's like just, it yeah it's so sick it's literally like people just sitting there and yeah. just the air. I think they were, they they had the string section. I thought it might have been the full orchestra. I don't know. Yeah. I remember watching a video on it. They just sat them in a room and recorded a minute, two minutes of them just sitting there, yeah, just breathing. So if you crank a limiter and like compress it, you can oh, hear yeah. people breathing, moving around, fiddling mm -hmm. with their instrument. You can add AC units, little like, analog noise. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I uh, like a couple of years ago, like I started listening to artists like Olafur Arn Arnold, oh. uh, like the Icelandic composer. Yeah. Um, Nils from like some of these like minimal guys and the white noise that they use is crazy like yeah. it's just it's cranked it's mm. so intimate though and like it you know it's it seems like if you know, obviously for pop and stuff like that for pop production they don't do that kind of stuff right. Right? because you don't want it to be like it's very clean cut yeah and but it, it gives that atmosphere yeah right it's like you're in the room it, it, literally the imperfection yeah. yeah the imperfections the just like shh, like hearing that yeah. i'm like i'm doing that so i started like throwing in white noise loops and like i crank them through the same reverbs yeah. and pan them or like take out the lows and like whatever 
but that stuff the hall the hall noise is key like i really like that and just give it a little bit of You've a room. life yeah. <laughs> now i won't i won't put as much noise if i'm sending stems to you right. know obviously yeah. like oh. but yeah. when i put it for a soundtrack album like yeah. i'll mm-hmm. pump it up a bit because i that's how i feel like we can make it feel like they're actually oh for sure it's actually like a hollywood yeah. thing you know even in even in soundtracks like i kind of obviously i don't put whole noise in the you know synth stems or anything like that i just have right just straight in with the orchestra so yeah it, it still kind of sounds like it's in a room mm-hmm. but I'd, I'd still bring it down i don't put it as much as a yeah on like the score album or anything yeah no, it's it's good not to. I honestly, I crank it sometimes to be honest. Yeah. But like, it's good not to because like, <laughs> like I, it depends. It depends what it is. But yeah. definitely when I'm sending stems, no way. Like I'll just. I didn't even put hall noise the last time I sent stems for these batch of films. But with all of the score albums, now yeah. I'm like just putting it a bit. Like okay, I want them to feel like they're in mm-hmm. this space because I hear it. Uh, if you mm. listen to soundtrack albums, like I was listening to like War of the Planet of the Apes by Michael Giacchino yeah. and like. The, amazing soundtrack but i could hear like so much noise with like there was this one cue called exodus wounds and it's like this the piano is so quiet like it has the the dynamic arc of the cues like from zero to like a hundred basically yeah. so you can really feel the room and i was like i'm doing that so like I, i'm like i'm putting the air noise and like it's cool. but it's nice. yeah Just even yeah. uh like edm and like you know, more like dance. Tons pop. of noise, yeah. Tons of tons of white noise fills it out. As a rhythmic thing. Yeah. 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 So lots of different uses for With it. Like side chain and like yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It'll it'll kinda like emphasize like the hits mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. The clarity. Mm-hmm. I feel like I always have to bo- boost you know, six K and up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, get every the yeah. I have to boost highs. I do some stupid things sometimes, yeah. but, <laughs> but it sounds good because you know what? And I was listening to Junkie XL talk about this. He's like, the reality is people are listening to your stuff on iPod headphones and mm-hmm. iPads yeah. and computer, laptop speakers. So you better make it sound good. And I'm I like, hear anything under a hundred anyways. Yeah. yeah. It hurts. <laughs> well, now I feel like the high end, the high shelf on uh, like pop music and even like a lot of this film stuff. Oh, it's yeah, pushing it like right. as compared to what it was before like it because if you listen it's one thing like mixing on the rockets i mean this room's not treated or like mixing with like you know the audio tech headphones but if you go to ipod headphones after you're gonna find like it's way too warm that's yeah, what i, mean, I found like i'm like yeah. it's way too warm like i i have to do something here because not everyone's listening in like a space where the the sound travels like a theater yeah. right so with the stems, I wouldn't crank the highs as much, but for the score master, I'm like, I gotta bump it a little because they to, might be yeah. listening on Spotify with iPod headphones. Exactly. I make those part of my reference speakers too. Yeah. So I got Audio Technica's uh, my main monitors, and then just a pair of. That's what. You know, yeah, man, it's key. Like having three three different things. Even the laptop, I'll unplug the interface yeah. and just play on just the laptop. Play. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous, it's like, but oh, it's so true. I yeah. can't hear this. I can't, yeah. you know, too much of this. Because so I it's like even if you listen to, I think it was uh, it was Junkie XL's um, cue from Mad Max, the Brothers in Arms one. It the high end, like it is. It's so clean and crisp yeah. in the iPod headphones. I'm like. So I always try to compare if right. like depending on what I'm mixing, I'll try to have like okay this this cue's kind of similar from whatever movie, and I'll try to like A and B it basically, and like try to get the yeah. It's always good to have a reference track, especially when you're not in a when you're in an untreated room. Yeah, it's you know, having it's time consuming going through all your reference speakers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's funny on uh, the studio time. One of the studio time episodes, like with Junkie, he's like, "Oh yeah, I don't treat my room because like you're never gonna listen to music in a treated room." Like he literally says this one time. I'm like, wow, okay, okay, interesting. He's like, "I don't treat it like yeah. because it, you know a theater's gonna be different. Like uh, like everything's gonna be sense, different." You see his room; it's just all hard it's just, services. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like it's not treated at all. Like, <laughs> but I I was like, okay, I won't. You know. Screw it then. I won't. I won't spend yeah, the cash to like. Yeah. But I, I think I. You know. I think there's still, you know, important things. Yeah. With treating. I mean, stuff I wouldn't that, heavily treat a room, but I'd, it's nice to have some. Yeah. Balance, mm-hmm. so you can hear. You know, it's nice to have an even range across yeah. all the frequencies. Because you yeah. can't hear 
under 100 dB in your room, it's a bit of an issue when you're doing like massive cinematic hits. Mm, totally. Because then you send it to them and they're like, why is there so much 20 hertz? Yeah. <laughs> and and that's sometimes. again why the iPod <laughs> headphone mix is yeah. nice. Because like, they might, like honestly, like directors are listening to, like, as far as the short film ones and the indie stuff, like they might have good headphones, maybe. Yeah. But like they don't have, they probably don't have good speakers, especially the student films. Like right. they have iPod headphones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how they're going to listen. Like they're not, <laughs> They're not, you know, and then they can go listen to it on the mixing stage, or, uh, yeah, the mixing stage after. Definitely key to have the references. Oh, for sure. Part of the challenge nowadays. Yeah. The, the ways people consume music have to change the way you approach it. I yeah. know. Everyone's having to do that, right? Yeah. So. And I feel like stuff's just absolutely cranked now, too. Like, the yeah. loudness oh, war. Yeah. It's insane. Oh, you look at the waveform, it's just a sausage. Just a, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, there's no Dude, dynamic. No, there's no dynamics. Unless, yeah, that's something I try to, to I, I don't try to do that. I like to have dynamic. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's, if, if it starts off really quiet, yeah, sure, you've got to turn your volume all the way up, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Yeah. I think we have a little weird. bit more leeway with the scores, as compared to if it was pop. Yeah. Because pop, you have to, you got to crunch it's, it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you you got to move to it, right? It's yeah. got to... Mm -hmm. Especially the four on the floor stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a hit. Right? <laughs> That's our latest song. Like yeah. latest single. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah, just yeah. yeah. But yeah, no. I I recently mixed this new one um, from one of the short films, and I was worried because I'm like, oh, like I don't want to crank it too much because it's like ha it has quite a dynamic thing yeah, going mm -hmm. on like and it really hits at one point for like two seconds but i'm like i'm not crunching this with limiter i don't care right, screw yeah. it like so i feel like with the film stuff we can like you know yeah. we assume that people are going to listen with headphones and if they don't like it is what it is but it's not pop where pop is like they're just in the you know yeah listening on whatever yeah but i feel like there's certain people that listen to film music too so they know what it's yeah what it's like they're kind of in that vibe like they need to be in that world yeah so they gotta have you know the headphones or yeah i'm i'm super picky like i never listen to things on my phone like yeah you know, we'll be sending demos to each other to the band or whatever can't, yeah. i have to wait till i'm home and i'm on my monitors or at least headphones yeah yep. or in the car yeah but like i can't just like no <laughs> yeah i need some even apple headphones like i don't use them much but i would wait to like listen to something yeah yeah for sure I find that even like when, like when my buddies will send me like the short films, like the like different cuts and stuff. I'm like, I have to wait till I'm home. Like, mm -hmm. he sent me on WeTransfer on my phone. Like, I can't <laughs> watch it here. And that's what they do as well. Like most, I feel like most of the directors do something like yeah. that. Like they'll try to wait. But I don't know. Because you get I've, a different feeling too. If you're watching something for the first time on your phone, you're not really kind of into it. Mm -hmm. They'll be sending back notes that they didn't mean to send. Because then yeah. they watch it when they're on yeah their own gear it's mm -hmm. like completely different it's a totally different feel yeah like even hearing the stuff I, like with, with speakers or in the theaters too like the music like it's it's completely different especially because they can run you know like certain stems to different you know parts of the 5.1 mix or right. the subs like just cranking that yeah. or, or whatever <laughs> like if it's big hits so yeah, I think I think we have a little bit more leeway, but even honestly, a lot of the film stuff now, especially the action stuff, is just absolutely cranked. Yeah. Or like yeah. the trailer it stuff. On the, just all oh, the trailer stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't even know how they do it that loud. Yeah. Like I, I actually don't know. Yeah. I don't have the the expertise or the plugins <laughs> to do what they do when they master those tracks. No it's idea. It's done really well. Yeah. Yeah. What do you uh, guys use like like on like the master chain and stuff like that for like limiters or? Oh. Like, <laughs> here we go here we go I'm excited now <laughs> let's go if no honestly yeah my master bus is like a, that's my biggest work. when I'm writing though it's it's not as into, I just have a just a basic limiter yeah just, just to bring up the volume a bit yeah but when it gets into mixing I've got an EQ then a multiband um, and a SSL compressor mm -hmm. um, but it's, lately I've discovered this new waves plugin it's called center it just it spreads it really so you can yeah you can adjust the volume of the the spread and the the kind of the okay i need to i need to figure that out so i kind of boost the the spread and bring down the, the center of it so it's like a nice wide i mix. gotta get that that sounds amazing yeah. i need that. <laughs> i need that right now <laughs> center and it's nice with film music too because it gets out of the way with dialogue because dialogue's usually right down the middle yeah. in the center channel so it mm -hmm. kind of like makes that room for yeah which is quite nice 
I find I need to definitely pick up the pace with that, with the panning and stuff like that. I, I feel like I need stuff, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I, I want stuff, like, equal in a way, like, volume-wise, and I, when, when, when one's, like, too far, like, whatever, if it's, you know, cellos and violins or whatever, yeah. and it's too cranked, I'm like, ah, like, I need it, I, yeah. I want beef, and... Right. Even thinking about like the Spitfire Library, like the Han strings, like their cellos are just centered. Right. Uh, Sixty cellos centered, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, like that's not usual for the setup of an orchestra. Yeah. But I guess it depends. It depends what what the cue is. Like if it's like an action thing, or if it's more of you know more of a classical orchestral thing. But but I need to get that plug in. Yeah, right. <laughs> that sounds it's, sick. It's nice. Center. Okay. Waves. Yeah. No, it just opened so many doors. Because I find that, because I usually mix in mono, mm. so then when you get so used to just listening to a horrible mono yeah. mix for... You mix in mono? Yeah. Just to get the levels right, so mm. everything's cutting through. It actually through. helps a lot. And then when you when you take it out of mono, it's like the best thing you've so ever you heard. So you can sit back and just... Yeah. Oh, I haven't done that. Do you do I that? Do you uh, like direction mixer or something? No, just on my um, uh, monitor control. Oh, on your monitor. It's okay. just a, a mono button. So right. Like, I just click that in. Yeah, direction mixer, same thing. Yeah, I just do that, stereo to mono, and then, then just take like it off. Oh, this sounds crap, and then you mix it and you make it sound yeah. like a lot better, and then you take it into stereo and it's like amazing. Like, it just sounds. Yo, I I don't know how I'm missing that kind yeah. of thing, but I gotta get on that as well. Yeah, it's yeah, it's good. It's, it's just good to make to sure there's there's room for everything. Yeah, because yeah. then like, if someone's listening to it on their phone, I mean most phones these days just have stereo, but if mm -hmm. you know, the old fashioned older phones yeah. it's just one speaker on it so if they're listening to music on that and mm -hmm. it's a yeah. piano track sure is not cutting through no problems with it yeah. huh yeah I gotta check that out that's key like getting this, the spread right and the levels mono yeah. that's yeah I don't know why I've never, I've it's, never I mean if that. you're referencing on a lot of different systems yeah then that's it's hard you're kind, well you're kind of doing like the same kind of check I on, guess yeah you're kind of accomplishing the same thing but if you just want to stick with the monitors Mm -hmm. And just do a mono, yeah. mono mix. It's yeah, that'd be key for the levels for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Never mind, like thinking about five point one eventually. <laughs> oh, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it, but I'd like because it's easier to go from five point one and sum it to stereo and, mm -hmm. instead of the other way around. But I, yeah. there's, no, there's no point. Yeah, it's I don't. Someone's gonna do that for me yeah. anyway if they if they want yeah, to have yeah. a five one mix. But yeah, I mean, yeah. the stuff we're working on at the moment. So for now, you don't really not, have to worry about it. Right, yeah. So. That's the thing, right? But uh, but yeah, because even all the the short films, even the student stuff, like they do mix in five point one, like yeah. the later years, depending on what college it is. But uh, mm. yeah, I mean, I just we just send stereo, and then they can run it wherever they want, right? Mm -hmm. That's why the stems are key. Exactly. Like if you don't have stems and they're doing five point one, it's kind of impossible. Yeah. But <laughs> but I hate sending stems too. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like time consuming. How yeah, what's yeah. the stemming process like? that you've done on your stuff honestly I just separate everything out sub bass sub booms yeah uh, I try to keep the orchestra together because they like y you never know what they could do they might make the woodwinds just absurdly loud over the yeah. brass <laughs> do you <laughs> sub do them. you separate it with like like low mid high when it comes to the orchestra or is it just literally like just cellos and violins all in yeah. and all in one so I'd, okay. I tend to have yeah the orchestra just sum down um synths uh, special effects and then just sub bass yeah. and sub synths booms four or five stems yeah and when That's you're and how do you uh, do you just like um, like solo tracks and, and bounce them or like do you use the um, uh, the stemming so what I so I've got all my so my orchestral template is mapped out in a way that I can sum all of the tracks into just one is stereo it track okay and then just i just print it to do that. you have them going to buses or like yeah you, okay right so i it, it, it depends on the project because it, it's my big orchestral template they all have their own different buses yeah so brass longs brass shorts etc mm -hmm. um, and then i i print those to those stems and then get those print them to the master orchestral stem so it's just <laughs> it's, it's a lot it's a yeah <laughs> and it, it is a bit of a pain in the ass yeah, but I just I like having complete control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm picky. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. No, I I it depends on the score. I've, like since some of the ones are smaller, I haven't done like a 
ton of unless I'm doing like the animation stuff most of the short films are like the drama indie so it's like whatever right. piano drones intimate strings maybe yeah. synth subs like something like that or hits if there's percussion but uh so sometimes with that honestly sometimes I just like solo stuff if there's not too many stands but obviously orchestral stuff busing yeah for sure because yeah. you can just solo the bus print it so the, or whatever right it's, it's nice in logic too because you can um you just have track stacks yeah just select right strings yeah that's automatically on its own bus ready to so, go yeah the right. track stacks are key too in pro tools you can't have that no it's just you're all on yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. there's so many ways but uh so what kind of stuff are you guys working on lately like besides the obviously the band stuff like as far as other projects or what's the trajectory like what you want yeah, to yeah i'm working Pretty heavily on the new, the next two Adelaide tunes. Okay. Uh, one of them's almost there. Just a little bit more tracking and then yeah. mixing. So you guys get like a is is it for a demo one or is it for like a? This is for the the real deal. Real Hopefully deal. out in the next few weeks. Hey, so it's, let's go. it's almost there. Yeah. Trying to keep the momentum up. going. When that one came out, I was listening to it all day, <laughs> yeah. like all day, because nice. it was a mixing day for me. So I was like. When I do mixing day, it's just like all day. It's like yeah, I'm mixing because I'm like OCD, so I have to like listen to it on all the different things. But I was, and when I was having my breaks, I was like, okay, let's go. And then I put it on. Yeah. <laughs> Done. So you're yeah. working on that. Yeah, working on that. Also writing just a bunch of instrumentals mm -hmm. for licensing mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, for sure. Yeah. So having fun with that. Putting trying to. In my mind, I like to keep like having collections of like styles. Yeah, you know, even if they're instrumental. Yeah, like, yeah. Even if they don't come out as an album or anything, I just like you know, working in kind of blocks of for sure styles. genres. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice for portfolio too. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. Bit of everything having, in the, yeah. yeah. And you came out with the Lo-Fi album a little bit ago. Yeah, Lo-Fi. That was fun. Oh, I'll yeah. just probably do something yeah. similar to that again. But. I love doing the Lo-Fi, man. It's yeah, so fast. It's fun. I just use the Zoom and like I'll record oh, yeah. whatever audio and just toss it in and like, nice. you know, with my buddies, the twins again, like we'll do, we have that Spade Brooks uh, mm -hmm. artist, so like we do the lo-fi stuff and it's just, yeah, I'll sometimes use the Zoom with the piano upstairs or just, you know, some really crappy sample, like literally an iPod sample sometimes, yeah. like I'll voice mm -hmm. memo, voice, voice memo, like some random piano or something and like toss it into contact sample it and like it sounds there's noise it sounds like crap splits it over the keys and just like yeah. janky piano that's what we, i love about sampling yeah oh this i love sampling endless yeah there's so much you can do like yeah. it's just it is endless like it's crazy like when i was at um when i was in la at, at hans's like i sat in with with their sampling department and it's just like <laughs> next Mindful. level like the guy's like teach me through a bunch of stuff he was actually amazing um but he was showing me through contact and like how to because i mean so when i sample like i'm just recording one thing and like yeah. it's just mapping mm -hmm. it just yeah but the way that they're doing with the different velocities and having like you know three or four notes per note yeah. and then you do all of the key like or they'll do um he, he would they, they wouldn't do every single key but they do it basically by like semitones like they do c and then you pitch that for c sharp and then they oh, do right. d and then you pitch so you can kind of do anything you want yeah um you can it can get as uh, intricate as you want mm -hmm. but, yeah like, but yeah you know, that was uh samplings. 16 round robins and then oh, that's you know, 10 different philosophies <laughs> like, uh, i don't know yeah. maybe i'll just stick to you know one note per key <laughs> i know that's the thing like with the hollywood stuff like they're i mean honestly though like a lot of their with with like Hans's studio, there's a lot of um, like there there's so many like amazing composers there, and they're all doing different things. Like some are doing like the smaller projects, you know. Um, there's the guys uh, like Bleeding Fingers are doing like the Planet Earth stuff. Right. They're doing like more like TV stuff or like licensing stuff, like library music. Mm -hmm. um, so it's th their setups aren't crazy, you know. Like it's it's the one computer. Um, and it's basically in the box, like, you know, they're not s sampling there or even m maybe one or two live players. Then there's the bigger guys who are running like five computers and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> and like Hans's room is just like insane. Walls and of mods and ridiculous. And, yeah. <laughs> and so, and then, so that's, uh, that's kind of what that is. Um, but as far as like the sampling goes, like w if it's one of the bigger guys, like obviously like 
well, Hans or, you know, one of his bigger guys like Henry Jackman or like Ben Wallfish. Like they'll like with Hans and stuff. Like they'll approach you know sampling like per movie. Like he'll be wanting sounds right for each movie. Like yeah. new sounds. Like and that's what the sampling department was was showing me. Um, kind of how like he'll say like okay I want this sound I want like he tries to make a new atmosphere and that that was said like I don't know if you guys took did the master class at all did. You, his Hans Zimmer no, masterclass. Uh, he said that in the masterclass, though. He's like, he tries to approach, like, a new palette for yeah. each movie. Mm -hmm. I think so, that's the key as well. Otherwise, all your projects are going to sound the, the same. same. And yeah. it's just, over time, it's going to sound a bit stale. And that's why the sampling is key, too. Because yeah. if you actually have the time to do that, you can get instruments that aren't in the box, you know? Obviously, the smaller projects, we do it in the yeah. box, but yeah. getting it's the other A sounds. way to stay unique, for sure, in any... A genre if it's film music or yeah, pop sure, music yeah. or anything yeah. sampling's kind of the way to yeah sound well, unique because, you're because creating it, sounds that no one else exactly right. essentially has yeah because like we can get all the spitfire libraries and yeah. east west and native so instruments but those. everyone has them yeah. right yeah. and uh so that's something that's important and i think even just uh, like sampling and then the live players even one live player even like mm -hmm. whatever instruments we yeah. play like if it's keys I'm laying down keys for sure. If it's you know guitar is something like yeah, the human element is huge. Some exactly. kind of human element. And otherwise, it's just like quantized trailer music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like Metro. trailer yeah. music's cool. But you know, you know what I mean. It just mm -hmm. becomes the same thing, and it's just like okay, like. But that's what I found that that they are really big at when they have the budget for the massive projects, which is like all of their projects. Yeah. But the smaller guys, again, it's in the box. Yeah. It's, it's the small rooms. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's basically, it would be like, you know, the size of the couch back, maybe, maybe just the stage, like just a little square box mm, yeah. um, when they're doing the smaller stuff. But, but yeah, the bigger stuff, they, they try to keep it, keep it unique with the samples. Yeah. So I try to like, I learned that and I'm like, okay, like I got a sample. That's why I got the Zoom because I'm like going around it's, like yeah. doing stuff, even just quick, you know, it's quick nice. samples. It definitely makes you use your resources. Mm -hmm. well, that's why I've tried. I've cut back on all my sample libraries now. I'm just yeah. using the, the basic East West stuff. Yeah, and just the really basic everything it. in East West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. the basic. Yeah. Hey, Composer Cloud got it all, man. Yeah, yeah. honestly, I I don't think I've used Contact in months. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta stop buying sample libraries. That's my problem. <laughs> I, I, I have the urge. This is voice in the back of my head. Go to Spitfire's website. Makes you better. Makes you a better writer and composer. So. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, yeah, it does, Han Strings was ridiculous, to be honest, like, that, it's a game changer, it's, it's next, All right, it's so next level, go home and buy it right now, yeah, you yeah. gotta <laughs> buy it, but, I mean, but you'll sound like Hans, kind of, so you gotta be careful, yeah. I mean, unless you have to sound like Hans, which is like, you know, yeah, it depends on what but doing. that's his studio, his studio, those yeah, guys exactly. can sound they like Hans, it. we, we yeah. gotta do something different, especially with the indie film, but that's what I find, honestly, like, a lot of the smaller directors are like, give us temp music that sound that's haunts or that's like all these yeah. big composers like dude like your budget's like nothing like you want me to just recreate this with like samples like how about yeah. we do something a little bit more exactly. unique right so it's it's good having that dialogue with them and kind of trying to convince them into mm -hmm. giving you that trust yeah. and making Could, something unique yeah because then at the end of the day if we're just trying to sound like the guys who are i mean like these guys are 60 65 they've been doing it like hans made a new sound like whatever 25 years ago and kept evolving but and he's the biggest guy now but now i feel like there's it's like we, we're younger generation we got to figure out you know mm -hmm, our voice right. too right and you can get away with copying them right? yeah and still create something yeah that sounds great but, but maybe at the end of the day you didn't do anything for yeah. yourself yeah. or your future totally. or the future of the industry. So. There's no brand. Like you're not building your own unique voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. Yeah, for sure. So that again, like the sampling, the audio stuff, like I even try to get my buddy Reed, like he plays violin. I met him in business school at Mac oh, yeah. and he's, uh, he's just straight business. So he's not really like pursuing music, but he, he could have, probably and like gone to school for it and stuff because he's been playing forever and he so he can like improvise really well but right. as well he grew up with the classical stuff so that's why i don't write sheet music for him because i know <laughs> he can like figure it out yeah <laughs> but just getting on him like layering on like even if yeah. i do have han strings and then he layers over top and then i bring him up and crank him through reverb and bring down han strings and make it more of an intimate sound or 
pump the close mics with Hans and bring back the young, exactly, like make yeah. it more chamber sound. Mm-hmm. Just because having him on the solo violin, it's key. Or the cello that I can't play, like just even putting, <laughs> even putting a little bit, like just cranking it, yeah. and then go play for us. Come little auto tune, <laughs> no, it's, it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> That's why some people as well. I, uh, Christian Hansen, he's a big. Um, uh, he's great. I, I love his channel too. He's a huge influence. Yeah, and I take all of his advice, but he. For his smaller projects that he uses, he uses his samples, but he hires out a small, you know, like a string quartet or something, and layers that yep. in with the samples to get yeah. that. So you still have a fairly big sound, but you've got that, you know, live human yeah, it's element key. of it. Then I, I'm, s- I have to have like a live element on every track, basically, even if it's just me playing piano or something. Yeah. But like, even with the strings as good as the Han strings are, which they're ridiculous, <laughs> but I still would want to, if it was a real big project that like, or even any film, if I'm releasing the music, I, I, I'm going to get read on it. At least even layer the violin one part or two. Yeah. And if, you know, he can tune down and do the viola part too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even getting one voice, like one voice and then put, put it in, putting it in, um, is key. Yeah. Is key just to like give it that human, the chamber, the chamber stuff, or the the string quartet adding it, mm-hmm. key for sure. I feel having that solo instrument makes that project unique as well. Yeah, I feel like you look at different films and they all have just one solo instrument. Yeah, either playing the main theme or just somewhere subtly throughout the film. Yeah, and it just it, it makes it satisfying to listen to, but really unique at the same time. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love it. No, I love that too. I think that's that's key for sure. Because especially with the way that film score is now a lot of people are just trying to do the action kind of sound and like that yeah. the trailer sound and it's just like okay well this is the same like i don't know your voice like I, who are mm-hmm. like it, this especially with the trailer companies it's just their yeah. name but <laughs> never mind but um yeah i think it's nice and i think that's actually a thing that we have with the toronto films with the indie films with the way that uh the industry is going up here in canada it's like we can actually be more experimental because we don't have the budget for the big orchestra, so right. we don't necessarily no, write. You know, we're not expected to do yeah. that, and it's not as doesn't have to be as cookie cutter. Yeah, like we got to make a, our own sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, but also unique. following what the director wants. Obviously, it's oh, their yeah, film. Of course, it's a balance. Yeah. I mean, we can make our own albums for our own stuff yeah. if we really want. Like it is work for hire, but you know, push the needle forward, right? So, I mean, if John Williams never did Star Wars and kind of brought back that you know the whole kind of sound like i mean that wouldn't have been like it wasn't that wasn't there before you right. know for a while anyway like mm. with you know this the the film music in the 60s and stuff like that is is different right <laughs> with all like the thr- thrillers or like even back to like the alfred hitchcock stuff right, like, it's, yeah. it's different it was different and then he brought back that you know that uh holtz kind of more classically influenced stuff and I feel like every era has got its own sound, but oh, for sure. Yeah, we're definitely still in the Hans Zimmer it's, era. Yeah, it's been like twenty-five years. <laughs> so it's good on him. <laughs> good on him. Beast. It's crazy. Yeah. But uh, so, what are you guys? What are you guys working on? On uh, on next? I don't even think we got to what you were working on though no. lately. Um, I'm I'm working well, as well as the Adelaide stuff. I've got uh, my own stuff coming out uh, next Friday. I've got a track. Single is coming out. Let's go. Yeah, so that's what's the orchestral? Vibe? It, yeah, orchestral. Cool. Typical, you know, Ben J. Lee mm-hmm. attached. Can't big break out. Big brass. Yeah. Oh, Towards yeah. the end of it, it's, it starts out pretty intimate. It's quite nice. It's about kind of discovering a new place. Mm-hmm. So it starts off all, mm. you know, intimate and delicate, and then you know, getting used to it, you just build up, and it ends with a nice big. Yeah, it's the big go. Because they're my favorite <laughs> kinds of songs. Yeah, yeah. favorite Full. like. Like time, time, yeah, time. like that kind of yeah. The time starts vibe. super soft and ends super soft. Yeah, but it just four chords. I find in in my <laughs> writing out that's like my default yeah. is to like start really soft. Yeah, and just like build massive. Yeah. That's yeah. I man, time is like it's four chords and it's just like so <laughs> good. <laughs> How do you beat it? Right, you don't. Yeah, and he he's used that vibe in so many films too. Yeah, yeah. whether it's time or he used that in like 12 Years a Slave, had a similar mm. thing. Uh, Interstellar has those builds, kind yeah. of like mountains. Thin Red Line. Thin Red Line's earlier, actually, in the late 90s, after like he did 
Lion King and I think before like Gladiator and stuff like that, that actually has something that sounds very similar to Time way right. back then. And then he kind of like brought it back. Revisited. For, but it's cool to even think about each composer and their eras too because if you listen to, I mean some people like are like oh like Han sounds the same with Gladiator and Pirates and, and Last Samurai like they all sound similar it's like yeah but not yeah, like but, Sherlock or no, you know like yeah, a lot exactly. Interstellar is completely different completely right. different but I like thinking about or like listening to each composer and like went you know five year spans at a time it's like yeah these scores were going for this five and now he's at this five or now you know, it's more the synth elements or, you know, the hybrid stuff with, like, the Dark Knight right. or, or Inception. And, yeah, so it's it's interesting to kind of look mm-hmm. at that. Because they're all pushing the needle forward, right? And they, so we got to figure out how to do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> In the smaller sense, you know? And with the dream of eventually. Small for yeah. now. Small for now, <laughs> you know? So not yet, but... Eventually, I mean, so, well, they started in the same place as we did. Yeah, it's true. Well, so it's you know you got to start from the bottom and kind of climb your way up. So I like that journey, basically. Well, that's it's, the whole thing. It's kind right? of you're, you're working your way through it, trying to find your way. Yeah. While discovering what kind of who you are, yeah. what you want to write. Hundred percent. So what's uh, what's like the big uh, the big dream for you guys? Like, as far as, I mean not just like for the band and stuff but like individually where do you want where do you guys see yourself with music where you want to be in like whatever 10 15 20 years honestly wherever it takes me yeah <laughs> i'd love to be i i think film television and media is where i want to be mm-hmm. it's, uh, that's where i i love writing for mm-hmm. um but yeah like who knows definitely yeah what about you yeah it's um i'm open to a lot of different different possibilities but yeah um if it's film music you know like obviously it'd be amazing to be like a feature film composer yeah, that's kind cool. of the, everyone's dream but yeah um even yeah like consistently writing for advertisements and yeah and media Ad music like media any, any uh film or or video content yeah. I find is pretty like that's definitely on the rise. Mm-hmm. Like, all that content, so especially with social media and with all that stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the music industry is changing, but that's an opportunity, and yeah. definitely want to pursue that for sure, man. Yeah, no, I think like, yeah, we definitely have a big opportunity with that stuff because it's not going anywhere, mm-hmm. you know. Um, whether it's TV or now, you know, yeah. the Netflix, the streaming stuff, yeah. or if it's ads, if it's Instagram stuff, if it's you know there's so many things youtube mm-hmm. and then obviously big films and theaters yeah. and stuff like that but the way that people are consuming content is shifting and i feel like this medium that we're talking about like scoring for whatever if it's film tv games media it's not going anywhere mm-hmm. it might be pretty you know oversaturated but <laughs> it's a grind right and there's I feel always like, going to be a need for, for yeah that. it's okay. not yeah exactly and i think it actually has a lot more opportunity than thinking about like you know trying to break out as like a pop musician or something like that where that's like we can actually do small projects and make money you know yeah. whether if it's pop it's like they're playing you can play little gigs or or you're huge like it's one of the two yeah it's pretty you small know? middle ground in there yeah whereas this is like i mean yeah like an indie budget indie film budget could be you know 10 10 g's and then like a feature film in hollywood three million you know like yeah. for a music budget it's like that's what we're talking about we're talking about like the you know there's the little ads there's the video games there's the media content um and then there's the indie films and tv and then eventually the big stuff so that's why that's that's where i kind of want to be in is like kind of yeah see where the journey takes me mm-hmm. whether it's a film or tv or game stuff or whatever um definitely being a part of like i really want to be a part of telling like like the the, the stories that need to be told yeah. too you know like that really exactly. shares like like truth in some way and not just like stuff that people escape their lives for two hours at the theater yeah. like something that, where they the actually team. take yeah. away like something like uh that, that gets them thinking bigger about like like the the meaning and stuff and yeah and, and truth and so i definitely want to you know Obviously, we won't be able to always be involved in those kind of projects, but that's the goal. Like, hope, like, yeah, the hope, yeah, for sure. Those are the ones that you're just like, yes, like that's something I believed in, and that's something I wanted to help tell that story through sound, through music. Yeah. So, what are those films for you? Um, the ones that impacted me like that, um, definitely. I mean, as a kid, it was definitely like Toy Story and stuff like that. Mm. 
the Pixar films are always huge. Oh, like every Pixar film. Every Pixar film. Them. They just have that emotional <laughs> core, you know, like the just the morality, the yeah. the family, you know, the what it, whatever it is, like the relationships, the, the friendships, like their how they dwell on those aspects of story. I think is so key, and I think like it's key for us as can like we're not just writing whatever music like we have to write it for story, right? Mm, exactly. and, like it has to be story driven stuff and. But yeah, Toy Story was huge. I I loved like Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff like that. Um, bit huge was Interstellar. Interstellar mm. was actually the one that was like, I'm doing. I'm got to do film music. I gotta mm. figure out how, and I gotta just start going. Yeah. Because that core, like, even though it's like that vastness of space and the epic thing, it was like an intimate connection between a father and his daughter, yeah. like that. That that That's love ran through story, everything. Yeah. It was yeah. the heart and like. So those films, like those are the ones that I I want to take away. I must have listened to the Interstellar soundtrack oh, probably <laughs> hundred, two hundred times. Oh, dude, <laughs> easily. I got it on vinyl now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But, That's so good. But yeah, definitely being a part of those, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love the story driven sure. things. Awesome. Well, thanks for being uh, being here, boys. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank it was you. a good time. Yeah. Awesome. Until okay. next time. Yeah. Until next yeah. time. <laughs> but. Okay. Nice.